Welcome back to the JDC Podcast. Welcome back to the JDC Podcast. Welcome back to the JDC Podcast. Well, welcome back to the pod. Big JDC. We got Steve. Boy Steve in the building. Shout out JDC. For having me on. Appreciate y'all. Fact survival of the littest. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Peep, peep, the hoodie, peep the hoodie, peep the hoodie. Yes, sir. Glad so it works, so uh, looking forward to this one. So, like, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, what was your upbringing like? So, I grew up right here in Somerset. Uh, yeah, I've been through all the Somerset schools from kindergarten all the way to, to high school till I graduated. Right. I wouldn't say, like, Somerset's a nice... We, we got ups and downs. We got the money. We got, money. <laughs> we got a little bit up there by the, by the high school, but I'm more down. More than I'm listening for it. Right. Right. I'm a couple streets down from where we got home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm there by the high school. That's where, like, the rich people live in. We more... But a little bit. I would say I'm from Brunswick. Yeah. Yeah, on the skirt, outskirts of Brunswick. Yeah, more than that. If you cross my street, I can walk two streets. I'm in Brunswick, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm right on the border. But I'm not going to claim, like, oh, my God, I was over here struggling. Like, lights right. was off, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, this is, we, we run an okay town, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, and the way I explain it to people is, like, we're from the poorest part of the richest it's, county. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's, that's a great so, explanation. We're not rich, rich, but we're not Brunswick. Exactly. I was I was literally just coming from Princeton down today, and then from Princeton you see the signs of it's like welcome to Franklin. Mm-hmm. You even see these houses, I'm like, this is Franklin too. Like it's kind of weird. There's some parts that there's people in Franklin that never never even been down in these parts of Franklin mm-hmm. too. You know what I mean? But I'm not gonna act like I was over here struggling. Mm-hmm. Like we we was good for yeah. I was good for the for the most part. But it's not like. As a Hispanic household, we wasn't like, oh yeah, let me get the new Jordans that's coming out next. Right, yeah, it, right. wasn't, it wasn't like that. We was mm-hmm. in the middle class. Like, real definition of middle class, I would say, was my upbringing for sure. I feel you. I feel, I feel like when it comes to like people upbringing, like you never really notice the things that you don't have. Exactly. What could be bad for someone could be great for someone else, exactly. you know? So it kind of varies. The only thing, like, uh, if I wasn't in school seeing what other people had, I would never know I was missing anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. True. If I don't, if I don't walk into school and everybody else got the nice cakes and I didn't have one, like I didn't notice until I got to school. You know what I mean? When you get to school, is when you notice <laughs> what you're what you're lacking at your house. But when you're at home, I ain't lacking anything. You know what I mean? Right. Food's on the table, lights is on, water's hot, right. bed comfy. You know what I mean? But that shit like really hit me. Like, damn, there's a big difference between like what we got and what other people got. Um, the prom for the middle school was named formal. formal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I went to formal, because you know we yeah, had to yeah. drive in and they would leave you at the uh-huh. front door and shit. We pulling up. I'm looking uh-huh. at people's cars. I'm like, damn, these motherfuckers got nice ass cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, like, for real, bro. Yeah. I remember when I went to formal, bro. I just pulled up on some fucking dumb ignorant shit, bro. Everybody was rocking like a suit, tie, dress, very formal, bro. I, pull, I pulled up in some ga- uh, some khaki shorts, <laughs> some khaki cargo shorts, and a polo, like a what's it called? A, a fuck a nautica polo. I put the nautica motherfucker on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out my bro. <laughs> bro. I pulled up like that, bro. That's crazy, son. Bro. I feel like there's there's like pros and cons to the, mm-hmm. to seeing what other people got to, you know what I mean? Because at home, you don't know you lack and then, and then you see what everybody else got, and then you bring that same thing home, like, oh, like, that's when you start asking for stuff. Your mom, like, you wasn't asking for shit, like, Jordan. Boy, yeah, Jordan's, what's, boy, have you lost your mind? Like, you crazy? 220? <laughs> 220, what? But until you, until you... See what other people got. That's when you start wanting it. You didn't want it before you saw it because you didn't even know that shit exists. I wasn't. There's like two ways you could go with that too. Like coming up and seeing that, you could either be a hating ass motherfucker or that shit could motivate you. Exactly. And you could see like, damn, they got. I want that. I want to have that shit, and I'm gonna have it. But bringing that, bringing that home is when, when you start clashing. Like, why can't I get this? Why can't I get that? You know what I mean? But that's. That's because you want what somebody else wants. But we know that now, but when we was kids, it's just like, yeah. I'm trying to be cool, too. I'm trying, I'm trying to have what they having. And I feel like you, you, take, you, you mold that into what you want to mold it into. If it's hate, if it's motivation, that, that's on you, you know what I mean? Was there ever, like, a shoe that you always wanted? Like oh, you my God. Uh, the Bread 11s, for sure. Bro. The Bread 11s was, like, the craziest shoe to me. It was, like, 
when I thought of Jordan, I thought Brad Elevens. And then it's crazy because, like, around that time, like, elementary, somewhere in, like, the, the lower grades, they came out with them. Mm-hmm. Everybody had them. Everybody had them. I'm over here, like, bro, this is the craziest sneaker of all time. Like, I'm asking for it. My parents are like, what? <laughs> not even if it's your birthday. Like, that shit is crazy. They made right. the price tag because it was selling out and then reselling. Not as much as crazy as reselling is now, but they was doing it at a lower extent, like, as we were kids, too. Mm-hmm. So even them Brother Eleven that first, it was going for, like, they, people was camping out of stores for them for them type of thing. Right. You know what I mean? So right. Mine? Shit, bro. Carmine 6s. I'm not going to lie. Carmine 6s. Carmine 6s is dumb for I had a pair of the infrareds. Yeah. I always doing? wanted I always wanted the uh defining moments sixes. Mm-hmm. The ones oh, that are like black like with the DMV. gold. The DMV. Yeah, the DMV. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, they made those not too long ago too. And the crazy thing is about the Brad Elevens is like those one of the shoes when I did get some money, I'm like, Oh yeah, those gonna be the first ones I get and when I finally got my hands on them, it was probably like I think last year maybe it was the first time I got my hands on I was like Damn. it was like it was like when you satisfy like your inner child you know what I mean nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it made like it made like my inner child happy like I finally got what I couldn't get you know what I mean but like after you got them how did you feel oh like I felt like I felt like I made it even though I didn't make it you know what I mean I felt like I made it just cause like it's not even like now I have it in my collection like, like I barely I barely even wear them you know what I mean but it was just like yeah. It's more like a like a memento or a yeah, it's trophy like a or something. Like it's not it's not because like oh my god they're the craziest sneaker of all time, but it's mm-hmm. like I remember if my like younger self wanted these kicks, like mm-hmm. I'm gonna get these for him. You know what I mean? So I got them in the collection, but it's not like oh my I'm drooling over them nowadays. You know what I mean? So transitioning like from sneakers, I know there was a certain point where you started reselling as well. Yeah. What was that time period? For so you? at the time where I was just like. I was I wasn't reselling like crazy, but I was really just flipping on the side just because I was working part time. You know what I mean? Because we were still in school and stuff like that. So there's only so much there's only so much you can make at a part time job, and there's only so many hours you can work when you in school. You know what I mean? This mm-hmm. high school times. Mm-hmm. So I'm over here trying to get my first car and shit like that. So I'm like, I got a couple sneakers, but like the main goal is the main goal. You know what I mean? Like there's some stuff that I'm getting for me, but the main goal is always like a whip. So I just started whatever we we would get in at my job Foot Locker, shout out Foot Locker, the crew over there. I, when I first started working there, whatever we would get in on the side and I get and I didn't really need it. I knew like the car was a bigger goal. I was just like let it go to the side, post it on the story and stuff like that. But I never went as far as an extent like to try and make it a business or not like Wait, that. What like, do you mean where y'all would get on the side? Like y'all got free kicks? No, but we we would get discounts or mm-hmm. Like whatever was left over that people didn't want or stuff like that, like we would get, yeah, we would get like dibs on them. You know what I mean? So before before putting them on the wall, if I wanted it, I'd be like, yo, let me just get my size in that. And if I didn't really need it, then I'll just end up letting it go and just take the the little Mm -hmm. profit from it, but in the savings. You know what I mean? Right. So you're a piece of shit. He's like, that's smart sneak, though. He's like, the sneakers I wanted is, is <laughs> your fault. Yeah, it's your fault. Nah, like shit. But nah, that, that's funny as hell, bro. I mean, what's that, like, sneaker culture like? Because just based off of your tone, I could tell, like, you're passionate about it. Like, yeah, that was, like, before the clothing stuff, that was, that was like, the first love that I had. But I couldn't, I, I had it, but I didn't have it to the extent that I wanted it just because we weren't as fortunate. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... It grew over time more when it was getting when it was getting closer and closer. Like I literally started working in sneakers and stuff like that. So, just the sneaker stuff was more like a like a like a step to where I'm at right now because mm-hmm. the love of the sneakers was like first and then it like died out once you like get every once you get everything you really want you feel yourself in something else like you gotta move on to the next thing. So I feel like if anything the sneaker stuff was like a from kid to like and then we moving on to like the next thing type of thing what's the longest period of time that you went without buying shoes she I even like kid times cuz I went many years without getting any brand new kicks you know what I mean? right, right. Like, but once I started getting it like getting my own bread probably like the longest I probably was like 
four or five months before they drop something mm-hmm. where it's like, damn, gotta yeah, I got a cop or I've been waiting too long type damn. of thing. Damn. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy, but I'm not paying like what everybody else paying, like, like resale, resale price. price. You know, yeah, if, if I'm over here buying these J's for like resale price every two or three months, right. yeah, 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 you're, you're going to start seeing that in your bank account. You know, you're, you're probably paying not. like 180 to 230, 240. Yeah, yeah. No, no more than no more than two. 220 yeah yeah like uh 11's drop for 220 so no more than that unless it's like a like a birthday gift to myself or some crazy stuff like that but like nothing nothing too crazy huh? i'm not i'm not that dumb <laughs> no. yeah yeah that way <laughs> so from shoes you got to clothing now and you started your own brand i want to know how you came up with the name and what is the name for the people listening so the brand it's called Survival of the Littest, which is like a, it's a play off the phrase Survival of the Fittest, which a lot mm-hmm. of you probably know. It's like, you got to get, and you got to get everything in, within yourself together to be at the upper echelon, you know what I mean? To survive. So, Survival of the Fittest, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, Survival of the Littest is like, Littest is like a slang of our generation, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's a play off that, and then the abbreviation of Survival of the Littest is sold which is sun in Spanish, so it kind of plays into the little, my Hispanic yeah, side, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm an August summer baby, so the sun, sun kind of correlates to that. So I had a couple, like, before the brand actually launched, I was, it was years of just like, maybe one day, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. those late night thoughts, you like write a couple things down in your notes, like it was one of those things. So anytime I got like a little, like a little light bulb type right. of thing, you little write in your notes, so. I had um, I had a couple names, but Survival Litters is like it just for the reason that I just told y'all. Like it just ended up fitting with me, you know what I mean? That's exactly what I was hoping for, bro. I was hoping that he would be like, "Oh yeah, this is exactly how I came up with the name." Yeah, it's not like oh, yeah, I saw it on the internet. And yeah, so he said like, "Oh yeah, it just sounds yeah, cool." Yeah, okay. I just hit name generator, <laughs> random. Thank God it's not that because it took a lot of years, so I, I had a lot of time to think about it. I was just going to ask, bro, you said that you, you had late night thoughts. Like, how long ago did you have the concept of it? So, when I would go back, I was looking right when I launched the brand, I started actually looking back to, like, when I would write these stuff down. So, it was probably, like, like 2019, like, early 2019, before COVID. So, I was, like, probably, like, four years ago, but I'm just now moving on to my one-year anniversary. So I was thinking about it four years ago, but like, there's a lot of factors on why I didn't pursue it. Like, if it's bread, if it's like being scared, if it's like thinking it's not gonna work out, you know what I mean? So I was like, maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. So it was like one of those like ideas I had, but I never ran with it until like a couple years ago. You know what I mean? It was one of those factors, um, lack of skill. Like, did that ever get in the way, or were you just it was, fucking? I'm just maybe, kidding. maybe not lack of skill, but maybe lack of creativity. So I'm not, I'm not an artist, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But art plays a lot into clothing because yeah. if you want to be a good clothing brand designer, you can't just slap a logo on everything. You got to like, come up with a design. You got to come up with a design. I'm not no artist. So that was definitely one of the thoughts that was like pushing me back from going out. It was like, okay, I got this one idea, but once this drops, what else am I going to think of? You know what I mean? Like, you, you know how like writers have writer's block? Yeah. If I run into, like, creators, but if you want to call it that, like, I'm not, nobody's buying nothing if I'm not making nothing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that was definitely, I'm not, a, I'm, I know my skill, I know I'm not an artist. Mm-hmm. So, I'm creative, but I didn't know what level of creativity I had if it was good enough to start mm-hmm. uh, a clothing brand, if you know what I mean. Are you working with anybody? Right now? Yeah. Well, I have my cousin, shout out Darlene, she runs my... She runs my social media and my website. Mm -hmm. So, like, when it comes to, like, website creating and stuff like that, like, obviously, I get to say so. I I decide everything. But she's really good with, like, the the presentation and, like, Mm -hmm. the website making. You know what I mean? I could could obviously do it on my own. But if I know I could put out a better product with somebody's help, you know what I mean? That's that's the route I went to. And for my first uh, drop, for my first tee... I did reach out to a graphic designer just because I was um, I was a little shaky on how my artistry skills were, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, I gave him a mock-up. It's my design, completely my design. But 
when you send it to somebody that's a real artist, real graphic designer, they could tweak things and really like make it come to life. So yeah, so you give them a like a, bl- a blueprint and then they like pop it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, you get him taking like, the flower and he yeah, ate the fucking cake. Exactly. So it's not like. It's not like yo, I need a, I need a T-shirt. Like, make it for me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I definitely like this is what I want on it. Mm-hmm. Make it real, and then I take that, and then I, and then I actually end up making it. But yeah, I've gotten, I've gotten, I pick and choose where I want to have help at. You know what I mean? Because I don't ever want anybody to say like, oh, you know that guy? Yeah, that's because of me. You know what I mean? You're like, nah, definitely not. How'd you I pick find and choose the designer. The designer I definitely find on TikTok. TikTok mm-hmm. was like. Mm-hmm. TikTok is like the main main thing when it comes to like clothing. There's yeah. so much free game on there, bro. There's like so much free game on TikTok. So they'll give you like a clothing brand designer just because he wants his page to go more viral. He'll just give free game out to mm. everybody. So there's a lot of free game on TikTok, but you pick and choose like who you want to listen to. You know what I mean? Because if you yeah. take everybody game, you gonna drive yourself crazy. Yeah. Like if I take what you say, I take what you say. I take what man's down the street says. I'm going to drive myself crazy, you know what I mean? So you pick and choose who you think is giving good game out, you know what I mean? And then I ended up finding, like, a connection through somebody on TikTok, so, yeah. Damn, bro, that's interesting. So could you take us through the whole process from, like, conception to putting, like, your clothes out? What does that look like? For sure. So at first, I had to get past the the thoughts of what if it don't work like the scary stuff like Mm -hmm. the funds and stuff like that so that's what took like the longest but i got that push because of my sister shout out smiling at kelsey Mm -hmm. and darlene and them they're like yo like you could do it like why not why not you you know what i mean Mm -hmm. why not me if any yeah exactly my support system was the one that pushed it because if not i feel like it would have been one of those ideas that just died in your notes you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i feel like everybody might have stuff mm-hmm. like that like ideas that just die in your notes you right. know what i mean there's probably an overwhelming amount of people that have that yeah like, but that sometimes all it takes is like a little like a little nudge like come on like i'll i'll make your i'll make your website if you ever do it you know what i mean mm-hmm. or let me help you make a logo so that's what that's what really started it was that little push i got from my support system to get past the the little like mm-hmm. thoughts in the back of my head yeah but once those thoughts got pushed out the way first thing was like making a logo so it's like i already knew the the names out the name of the brand i was going to go for so now let's make something that's gonna be representing it you know what i mean because at the end of the day you can make a thousand designs but people are going to recognize you from your logo Mm -hmm. yeah that's true so my goal with the logo was more something that i don't want to be the guy that throws my logo on everything but eventually in the future once i gain everybody's respect for being a good brand then i could throw my logo on anything so like a like an essentials an essentials could throw their stuff on a blank hoodie everybody's gonna buy it but they had to gain that respect from the ground up to now be able to do that you know what i mean so i was thinking in the future i need to be able to do that so i need a logo that's gonna be simple prominent could be thrown on anything and still like be clean so i got the logo with the help of, of my cousin Darlene, shout out Ninth Vision, and then we got the logo out the way, and then out of nowhere, once the logo was out the way, it was like it was like my head just started rolling. It was like mm-hmm. a, like a like an engine. I didn't have any like designs or anything. I knew I was gonna go off the bat with because I didn't even think I was gonna start it right away. You know what I mean? Right. So once the logo got done, it was like the motor just started going and going How and long going. From making the uh, logo to so like starting the whole thing the, like the, the, the design my first design for my first t-shirt was made probably the next day after I, after my logo was made okay. just cause like everything just started clicking yeah, it's like, like it's like, real now once I saw it I'm like yo this is real like, I could really mm-hmm. I could really do this mm-hmm. so I start dabbling in the design and dabbling in the designing and then that's the first design just because it was my first design I didn't have the full confidence in it so mm-hmm. that's what I took to the graphic designer but from when i made the logo the logo was probably made in december of 2020 2021 
December 2021 was when I was messing around with the logo, but my first T didn't drop until September of 2022. So you were still in like high school when you were. Yes. Doing so this. ten months, ten months later from when I made the design is when the shirt dropped. Wait, how old are you? I'm 19 right now. Oh, I'm 19. Shit. I, thought, I thought he was like in the same grade as us. Like nah, our year. I'm 19, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I always hang around mm-hmm. these dudes. Shout out these dudes. These dudes are some real ones. We, we get on to that. We get yeah, on to that. that. It was like, oh, like, yeah, when the, COVID happened, I'm like, oh, so like senior year. Yeah, these, these yeah. dudes are real ones. So when I got into the, the design process, don't let people like tell you that clothing brand designing is easy. It's only easy if you don't care about what you're putting out. I feel like that's Elaborate. the main part. I could tell you, like, bro, you can make a clone design and you can have it out in a week. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And people will be buying yourself in a week. But it's not going to be quality. It's not going to be a, a solid design. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The whole reason it took me so long to, from when I got the logo, before it took me so long because of my thoughts. But after I got the logo and I knew it was real, it took me so long to drop just because I knew I wanted to put out some quality stuff. You know what I mean? I don't want to be the guy where... When you think of Steve, you think of, oh, that cheap-ass clothing brand. You know what I mean? Like, that was not how this was about to go. So, my that was the main priority. If I'm going to put something out, it's going to be quality. is not going to be no bullshit. So, I was ordering stuff, like, every month. Mm-hmm. I was getting, like, samples Sample. in, like, blank T-shirts in. Yeah. So, the process of it is more like you order a T-shirt online. Like, somebody somebody online says, like, oh, it's a quality T-shirt. You wait, like, two, three weeks for it to come in. You touch it, this shit. And then I got to go back, find a new one. Mm-hmm. It takes two or three weeks to come in, comes in the mail, you're excited, you open it, you touch it, this shit. Wow. You know what I mean? So you, you basically reached out to a lot of different manufacturers. Exactly, like, exactly. How looking did you on, find them? Was it through like TikTok as well? Looking on TikTok, looking on YouTube, looking on Instagram, Twitter, like everything, social media. Everything but asking for other brand designers help. You know what right. I mean? Because I was still, I, I wasn't announcing that I was dropping, nothing like that. You know what I mean? I was keeping everything like on the low. So I was like, I'm going to do everything on my own mm-hmm. first, and then we can make connections after that. So just every month I was trying to get samples into something that was something that was quality, something, a vision I had in my head, like, yo, when people put this on, like, it's going to be good shit. Mm-hmm. And then it took me like that long amount of time. It took me like six, six months so finally find like that my first tee that I really yeah. mess with and then we got it to come to life but then you got to get into the the website making then you got to get into the Instagram mm-hmm. then you got to get into the promotion to get some followers on your Instagram mm-hmm. then you got to make a sample so people can see what they're about to buy first you know what I mean like I could always like mock something up like on Canva or whatever you can mock something up but to really get people's attention, like it gotta be on my body, like this real, you know. Yeah. I'm wearing it, you know. What See I mean? how it and looks like. On I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna wear it with. Mm-hmm. So that takes to get a sample in person. That takes a couple weeks. So it's a little, it's a little bit of a process. But if it's really what you want to do, you gotta be in it for the right reasons. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's how the the first T-shirt came out to play, and then I just got like hella genuine love, and then with that love, it just we just started to keep it rolling, you know what I mean? So we got... How many drops did you have? So, so far I've had two drops. So in my first year, I had my t-shirt that I pretty much opened the brand with, my first tee. And then when February came around, I dropped my first sweatsuit. So it's a hoodie, this hoodie right here. Mm-hmm. They got a back design, and then it came with um, matching sweatpants. So mm-hmm. we're two down, and then... We you got a pipeline, bro. We're working on something here. right here. So the, so the work. Ooh, so damn. The so. Oh, that's, that's fire. That's that right there. That's fire. So we got that in the works for the end of the uh, end of this that's month, right. month at least. So that's that's what we're looking like for the next job. Damn, work, bro. That's fire. So. Going back to um, what you had said, so once you found your manufacturer, then you created your website, and then what was next? So first, the website, if you got somebody that could really like go crazy with the website, that's like the least of your worries, if you're not doing it on your own, you know what I mean? And then finding somebody to put 
your design on a shirt and like not let it be bullshit like, like for, printing it the printing yeah print it exactly oh. finding a, a quality oh. printer that you could trust was another headache so i ended up going to uh this first guy that i found yeah no free sauce you will never know <laughs> this, bro, this first guy that i found i i literally had to get my first sample from the mall like those mall kiosks because right, yeah. i'm like i'm so antsy and i can't find nobody to do it mm-hmm. i'm like I gotta see this with my own two eyes. I gotta see if this design like even looks good, good on a shirt before I like go follow through and show everybody it, right? Mm-hmm. So I go to the mall, I get it on the tee, like I'm like, yeah, like all right, now I see it's real, like we could do this. I keep looking for um I keep looking for a manufacturer. I-, I promise you, a lot of guys that like, start their own clothing, man, they they can't say they went to the mall kiosk to get their first oh, tee. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy, but I ended up finding this first guy. I took him my mall kiosk sample. I'm like, bro, I need it just like this. Like, right, just right. do it just like this. You know what I mean? But I can't, you can't do it at the mall. You know what I mean? Because that one T will cost you $45. The mall don't care how many you're doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's like, every T you're doing is $45. So how am I giving you $45 I'm trying to sell these shits for $45 you know what I mean so you gotta find a real manufacturer you can't go with the mall guys you know what I mean Mm -hmm. so I bring this to this first manufacturer I'm like yo just like this exactly like this don't change nothing up Mm -hmm. you know what I mean I feel like this story's about he's like alright like yeah it's right here it's easy I got it it. it's right here you know what I mean how can I fuck this up (laughs) I'm like, where? He's like, all right, so how many do you have? Like, how many are you trying to make? I'm like, oh, like, you can't just do one, you know what I mean? You can't just do one with them because they're not about to do their whole print setup. Put the ink on the machines, put it down and work for one shirt, you know what I mean? Like, you got to have a quantity up front for for him. So I'm like, all right, let's just, let's do like 30. Let's just start with 30, see how it goes. So now I'm, I got 30 shirts, my money in 30 shirts, and then I'm giving him half, which is a deposit, of what he's about to do for me, you know what I mean? Right, right. So now I'm money in with the shirts, yeah. and money in with him for his labor, you know what right, I mean? Right. So he's telling me, all right, like, give me, like, a week or so. Mm-hmm. Week comes, he's like, oh, like, oh, like, give me another day. I'm like, all right, another day can ride, well, uh, it should be ready tomorrow. I'm like, well, I'll come tomorrow pull up on man's at the time he says to come shit not ready he like oh like give me like give me like two more hours right, right, right. i'm like what i'm gonna go bust a move i'm gonna come back we're gonna be done i'm just excited you know what i mean it's my first drop like i'm just excited i'm oblivious to the unprofessionalism that he's showing me i'm just excited so i come back in the two hours and this shit is the wrong color Damn. the wrong size on all these shirts right. so now if i'm i showed him a a baby blue like this mm-hmm. my boy gave me that navy blue on that on that sign right there i'm like i look at this i'm like bro and on the small it looks fine you know what i mean because it's this size on the small small is a small shirt but then he keeps the same size on this extra large shirt so now everything bigger than the small looks Goofy. Right. So he's just taking like the same exact picture, the but, same like eight by eight, and then putting that in every exact size. He's not sizing up. But as a professional, him him being a professional know. Sh- should know better. Yeah. Me as an amateur, you would say, didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. So these are like trials and tribulations that you go through before you mm-hmm. could get to like some some success. You know what I mean? But then I'm like, bro, this is ain't this ain't it, bro. Like you got a lot of my bread, but. Then I realized, like, when I came back two hours earlier, that's probably when man started this work. Like, he probably just forgot about it, tried to rush it in these two hours knowing I'm coming back, and then just try to give me some bullshit and try to get off on me. I'm like, nah, this this ain't it. Like, I can't put this out. Like, I could put it put it out. If I was in there for the wrong reasons, that's $500 of my money, you know what I mean? Y'all better buy this shit off me, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm in it for the wrong reasons, but that's not, I'm, that's not what I'm in it for. Like, I'm out. I'm trying to put out quality stuff. Like it's not mm-hmm. about the money. It's really not. So if I wanted to sell it, I could. But mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not doing this to nobody because I wouldn't want nobody to do that to me. You know what I mean? So and I'm gonna having a back and forth with him. I'm like whatever. Coming back the next day, and then I'm like, bro, you know what you did. 
this is what I showed you. This is not what I showed you. And he's like, all right. So he ended up refunding me for that. So that was the right. yeah, that was the first that was the first like trial that I had to go through with the right. brand. And then I ended up. That's when my hand was forced to ask for like somebody else's like tips. You know what I mean? So my hand was forced. I ended up reaching out to somebody else I knew that ended up um, with their own brand. They put me on somebody that they trust, mm -hmm. and then. That's who I ended up rolling with and been steady with for the time being. But there's some trials and tribulations you definitely got to go through. But I always say, like, you got to be in it for the right reasons or it's not going to work out for you. You know what I mean? You ever thought about doing it yourself? Like, like printing them yourself, printing? manually? I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it. But I feel like there's a reason why there's professionals and then there's a reason why I, mm -hmm. I do what I do. So sure. if... I could definitely try it. It's going to, like, be a, a big learning curve and an investment, you know what I mean, trying to cut out that part of it. But mm -hmm. that part of it doesn't hurt me enough to, like, really need me. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, the people I got do a great job, and they don't try to one-up me, like, try to, like, kill my pockets. You know what I mean? So it's like they take a lot off my plate not having to worry about that so i'm not really forced to like really try to learn it myself yeah. like i'm doing just fine it makes sense like how how i'm rolling right now but in the future that could definitely be a possibility i know chris yeah chris uh yeah chris shout out there. shout out chris too for being my first model on the on the t that ended up being a like a, a really that ended up being like you, when you first start stuff, like you like, oh, this could be good, and then mm -hmm. it ends up just over exceeding your expectations. You know what I mean? That was definitely mm -hmm. one. Every time I drop, really has been over exceeding my expectations because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think like, yeah, I'm about to break the world every time I drop. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, like, couple people probably don't fuck with this. You know what I mean? So and then it's the just amount like, of like traction that you're getting is over exceeding your expectations. Yeah, exactly. The amount of love, mm -hmm. traction. Orders like definitely exceeding my expectations because I never been the type to be like I need to get this amount of people to like my stuff. You know what I mean? It's always like I do I do it for me. Like right. mm -hmm. to really start off all this, I really do it for me. At the end of the day, when I make a shirt and I put it on, mm -hmm. that that fills my heart. Like, like that's hey, all. Yeah, that's, I'm that's all I need. That's literally all I need. So that's why I always say like I don't do it for the money. Like. Mm -hmm. I do it because I generally like what I do. You know what I mean? Right. And just putting it on, knowing I made it, I'm good. Like, that fulfills everything that I need inside. You know what I mean? So and how then, do you go about advertising? Advertising is more like like shoots. You know what I mean? I try to uh, get photo shoots, get content off, off that, like behind the scenes. Uh, bro, you yeah. got to take this from the start. Like, how did you get the photographer... Who is the photographer? Who's working with you? So my team models where you get in them yeah. from. My team right now is, is just anyway. strictly like people that I rock with. Like mm -hmm. just people I rock with. Ain't no strangers like I'm mm -hmm. oh like I need your help with this. Like no, ain't no strangers in my in my team right now. So keeping it in the fam. The website I already shout out, Ninth Vision, Darlene, that's my social media that's my website that's my advertising in that sense and then i have my personal photographer which is anthony's sister you know anthony yeah. shout out anthony his sister's paola paola diaz pmd images that's my personal photographer for my brand right now mm -hmm. and she's been killing it every shoot but she's been doing stuff like that's that's like fan for me you know what i mean mm -hmm. so we were shooting when she went out. When she first started with the camera stuff, I was there. You know what I mean? So she was there when I first started with the clothing stuff. That's so it's like a hand in hand, like right. Batman yeah, and Robin. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, Are you there while they do it? Like, um, oh yeah, you know, I'm telling them how to pose. Oh and yeah, that type of I'm, I'm there for it from beginning to end. I'm there the whole way through. It's not like, all right, let me give you this shirt. Like, y'all go shoot with it and mm -hmm. send me what it look like. Like, nah, mm -hmm. I'm there. I'm picking who's gonna shoot. For me as well, those are everyone that shot for me is my people. Like my mm -hmm. first T was Chris and Izzy. Shout out Izzy, and my second drop was Anthony. Shout out Ant and my sister Kelsey. So every time I drop, it's like people that I mess with. It's like I make those type of decisions because I'm there from beginning to end. I, I don't take no shortcuts in that sense for mm -hmm. sure. Like my time is invested into that. Mm -hmm. I don't need to save no time. Like have somebody else handle my business you know what I mean? vision. exactly because then you could explain it to somebody like what you want but yeah. it's, 
they're never in here. And you then know they put mean? the they, same size on every shirt and make it look yeah, shit. like when you, exactly. You can always speak your vision, but like if you're not present, trying to get your vision like to come true is not gonna come true. You know what I mean? You definitely got to be present in what you're mm-hmm. trying to push at least. Because you're like the quality control. You're there to make sure that shit is exactly how you exactly. want it to be. They're going to be not, the best, but yeah. it, might not be, it might not meet your expectations. Yeah, I definitely nitpick right. at stuff like Same that. Like, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not posting a blurry picture. Like, if I see a picture get taken and, your sh- and my shirt's wrinkled, like, mm-hmm. you're wearing my shirt, we're trying to promote the shirt, right. I'm going to come up and I'm going to fix it. You know what I mean? Like, Can I ask you something real yeah, quick? Yeah, like that. So, like, with a lot of, like like brands like really popular popular brands like yeezy for example Mm -hmm. and like ultimately once you get up to that point where a lot more people your brand is a lot more popular and people are buying it yeah how do you feel about people like like you see yeezy like being rocked by like some really like corny individuals right (laughs) so like how do you feel about corny motherfuckers or like how do you feel about that like let's say they're rocking a soul shirt and that shit got like a coffee stain on it cheeto dust (laughs) how do you feel about that i mean Stuff like that is not what I wear, <laughs> you know, like present, repose, shit, and stuff like that. But anyone that buys my shirt, anyone that buys anything that I make, I got nothing but genuine love for anyone. Because that's like, at the end of the day, if I sell something for fifty dollars, mm. a lot of people had to work three hours, four hours to make that. You know what I mean? So I like, if you're a corny individual, you can be whoever you want. But if you're spending your hard on money on what I'm making, like, what I made in my room type shit, like, mm-hmm. I got nothing but genuine love for everybody that that supports me, but yeah. when I pick and choose to repost on my page if somebody's, like, on some, on some nut shit, like, nah, probably not, because I'm pretty picky with what gets, what gets done. yeah, what gets done, what gets posted, what gets shared, and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but I got no problem with, shout out to corny <laughs> niggas, man, yeah. <laughs> Yo, so speaking of, like, future and whatever, like, where do you want to take your brand? Like, do you want to take it, do you simply want to have it as streetwear, or do you want to ever push for a luxury type of brand? No, we definitely, definitely in the future is, I don't want to be stuck in a box, for sure. That's definitely one thing that I never want to be put in a box, like, oh, this guy just only puts out stuff that relates to his name. Or this guy only puts out stuff with his logo in the middle of it. Or this guy only puts out streetwear, like... Mm. I don't want nobody to put me in a box because like I said before I do every everything I make is for me first mm-hmm. so I'm gonna make whatever I feel like making I don't want anybody to think that I specifically make streetwear like if I feel like one day I want to make a compression tee for the gym because I work out mm-hmm. I'm gonna make a compression tee for the gym because I work out you know what I mean whoever buys it buys it like that that doesn't float my my boat what floats my boat is I get to make what I love, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I definitely don't want to get put in a box. If I want to make coats next winter, I'm going to make coats. If I feel like I want to make gym wear next summer, mm-hmm. I'm going to make gym wear. Like, I definitely don't want to be put in a box. If in the future I could dip my toe into all these different types of clothing, like luxury, like swimwear, like compression, gym stuff, like, I would definitely, I would definitely do it if I feel like doing it, you know what I mean, I don't want anybody to just be like, oh, he runs a streetwear brand that only drops graphic designs, like, right. nah, definitely not, I don't want to be put in a box. So then, speaking of that, what makes you pop from other brands? What makes me pop from other brands, I would say, is just the... Just the authenticity that I bring, you know what I mean? Like, ain't nothing that I, I put out is, like, with false intentions, you know what I mean? I put out stuff for my soul is because, like, even my name is intentional. Everything I do is intentional. Like, nothing I do is fake. I don't show no fake love. Mm-hmm. Everything behind my brain is, like, super real because I make it for me. Like, if I put out something, it's going to come from my heart, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of people out there that they'll just follow a trend. So that's where I feel like that's where my brand is different from. So if the Barbie movie is taken out the whole world, it's like the biggest movie in the world, this graphic designer is gonna make a graphic design for Barbie, you know what I mean? But I'm not I'm not here to chase trends. I'm not here to make something that the next guy wants to make or what thirty people are gonna like. I'm here to do what it's real for me. I'm not here trying to 
I don't wear bucket hats. You'll never see a sole bucket hat. You know what I mean? Not no no hate to nobody that wears bucket hats, but I'm just that's just an example, you know what I mean? I'm not here for no like fake stuff. That's the difference between my brand. Like people are out here just trying to grab money, you know what I mean? They'll just throw a logo on a bucket. Yeah, throw a logo on a bucket hat, but you never seen the clothing brand designer wear his stuff. You know what I mean? You made you made that bucket hat so you can make a band. But you're never going to rock that bucket hat. So what you got going on with your brand and what I got going on with my brand, we're on two completely different roads, you know what I mean? Because everything with my brand is going to be rocked by me, loved by me first before it goes out to the world. So that's why I feel like my brand is different from a lot of other people's brands. So what's your ultimate goal? That when you're gone, when you're not on this earth anymore, what do you want to leave behind on your brand, your company, or whatever direction it is you choose to take this in? Just being respected by masses for being skillful, not for who I am behind the brand. You know what I mean? I only want people to buy my brand if you rock with what got put out. Don't you don't need like to feel that you gotta buy this because that's, that's my brand. Like that Steve's my guy. Yeah, I show love to everybody. So there might be people that feel that way, but I don't want to be known that way. If you know what I mean. Like, when it's all said and done, mm -hmm. I want to be known as the guy that really put out some hard shit. You know what I mean? Put out a successful clothing brand from the bottom to the top. Right. And known as someone that's not trying to grab money, like, putting out real shit and being a real guy behind it. That's it. I'm not trying to beat out the next guy. Like, right. I, I could care less about the next guy. I show love to the next guy. You know what I mean? I Before I put out my brand, I bought pieces from everybody I knew, you know what I mean, purposefully, because I want that, I want the energy that I'm putting out in the world mm -hmm. to come back to me, not because I need it, but I feel like if I'm over here shitting on other people's brands, mm -hmm. mine's going to get shitted on, so I just want to be known as the, the guy that's real, put out a real brand, and took it from the ground up, I'm not here trying to kick nobody off their pedestal, that's all I want to be known for. So you don't feel any like amount of competition between any of the people that you bought from? I mean, if it's if you want to use the word competition, if anything, it could be friendly competition. Like I see what they got going on, and I'm like, okay. it motivates you yeah, I'm like, I'm like, them. yeah, I'm like, damn, that was hard. Like, mm -hmm. or damn, he's putting out six drops in a year. I'm 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 just starting, you know what I mean? Maybe in the future I'm gonna see it as a I gotta top this guy, mm -hmm. but. I'm like, I feel like I'm, I'm the I'm the rookie right now. Like I'm I'm rookie. I don't need to be trying to chop LeBron's head off. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just starting. So I see everybody else that's doing their thing, and I get I get motivated by it. So if anything, it's it's more like a like a friendly competition kind of thing. Not I don't think anybody should be like, oh, what what he got going on? You know what I mean? I don't see it in that way. I I look I look up and set it down. You know what I mean? Definitely like a friendly type of competition. I'm not trying to shit on nobody else what they got going on. You got any collaborations in mind? Working with other brands? Um, only collaborations that I have in mind is like just working with people that like are in doing good in their field. Like mm -hmm. this is a collaboration. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all I'm looking for. Like JDC and Soul dropping next J summer. JDC yeah. Soul. That's it. <laughs> that's oh, that's the only type of things I don't. I don't want. Not that I don't want, but I don't feel the need to do it right now just because I'm, like, fresh, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't need uh, this guy collaborating with me or, like, oh, can you please uh, drop something with me so I get a little push? Like, I don't I don't want handouts. Like, I don't want handouts. I want to be known for the guy that got it on his own. But I've always been that way. I don't, I don't like handouts. So the only collaborations that I want is, like, genuine stuff like this like podcasts pushing you guys you guys pushing me you know what i mean uh photographers regular photographers they pushing me i'm pushing them like mm -hmm. genuine stuff like that like um people that make websites people that fuck with logos people that host pop-up events like mm -hmm. just helping uh, helping each other out but i don't need a uh, like another guy's logo on my stuff just to give me a, a little push like nah, i'm not looking for anything like that right now at least uh, do you have any other like brands that inspire yours? For sure, just the the brands that I rock with. Honestly, like I compare my 
my stuff to like the quality that I'm that I would like to have. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when I look at shorts, I like like Eric Emanuel shorts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's a lot of like um, Instagram designers that that I be looking at this stuff. I'm like, yeah, they like they doing their thing. You know what I mean? So there's nothing that I'm like. I went. I I just like to. If anything, I'm comparing like the quality I want to get to, mm -hmm. not like uh, I want to be just like anybody. You know what I mean? But like, if I'm gonna put out socks, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to replicate something out of it, like a Nike sock or mm -hmm. stuff like that. But not try to like copy anybody or anything like that. Just high quality brands. I'm just trying to match quality. Like that's the number one thing with my brand right now is just quality like i really want people to know i'm not putting out no cheap stuff just to get one up on them because there's a lot of people out there that do so if they if they're putting out a t it could be a hard design like they really worked hard on the design and then they put it on a three dollar gilding t so they could sell it for 45 and pocket the 40 you know what i mean but if i got a go out my way to go hard for a design and then put it on a 12 dollar t-shirt and only make twenty dollars off the shirt, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that because I'd rather make a smaller amount and people be like, "Damn, bro, you did your thing with this right. quality," which I've gotten since I've started with this stuff. Like the quality is like the first thing that people compliment me on, which is all I need. You know what I mean? I'd rather do that than try to make an extra fifteen bucks a shirt and put out some some bullshit. So were you always so like business minded, like even growing up or I was always business was definitely always the on the front of my mind just because my oldest sister, she started her own business. She had she was doing nails. So everyone since she was a kid, she's nine years older than me. So ever ever since she was in like her teenage years, she was bringing people to the crib in the basement, like how we got this going like in their own and getting their own nails done in the basement, you know what I mean? So I saw that from the start, not from my parents, because they were just, like, working hard trying to get us to be good, you know what I mean? But, like, from my sister, that's, that's like, the first thing. You always look up, if you have, like, an older sibling that's you're cool with, you definitely look up to your older sibling. So she had her own business at 13, bringing people, getting their nails done, making her own money, and then when she was 18, she opened up her first salon, like, on her own, like... So business was definitely what I saw and like what I that's what I admired. So when I was going up in like the school years I was always like attracted to the the marketing classes and the finance classes and stuff like that. Like I knew that's definitely what what uh was intriguing me. Like when you're when you're growing up you start seeing like ah oh, that one's not for me. Like oh, maybe it's not for me. Like stuff like that. And business has always been the one like the front like this it's always been calling my name so that's what i ended up that's what i ended up falling into and that's what i ended up going to school for as well so i just knew that was going to be like prominent and it was, i would i would give that to my sister for showing me that when when i was a kid that's probably why i ended up where i ended up you know what i mean is there any advice that you could give to anybody that's thinking about starting their own path in anything not just the clothing brand but any type of business yeah, for sure. I would, the main thing I would tell anybody is just try it. <laughs> like, just try it. Just dip your toe into whatever field that you're, you're thinking about. Because, like, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, sh you miss every shot that you don't take. You know what I mean? Right, right. There's no way I know if my clone brand's going to work if I never started it. Mm -hmm. There's no way y'all knew this was going to work or if it wasn't going to work if y'all never sat down and started it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you... I feel like people are so scared to be known as the person that didn't work out. Like, Damn, that just give up entirely. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, I don't want to be known as the the person that started doing lashes and then fell off. You know what I mean? But yeah. instead, they don't realize that you're not remembered for what didn't work. You're remembered for what did work. You know what I mean? Mm. So, like... These, these, these rich... The richest man in the world, they got, like... 30 successful businesses, nobody's like, yo, y'all remember when Bill Gates started that telephone company and that shit, like, went bankrupt in two years? Anybody talking about that, you know what I mean? Like, nobody cares if you started a, a 
phone repair company and then next year you're like nah fuck phone repair I'm, I'm gonna go be a barber like no one cares when you're a successful ass barber no one's gonna be like yo you remember that one time you were trying to be a phone repair like yeah that, that was a terrible idea right. like no one does that you know what I mean so I would always tell people like dip your toe in and stop being scared of what people are gonna think of if in case it doesn't work because no one cares about if it doesn't work they only care about if it does work you know what I mean so that's that's what I would say at least. Damn, bro. I feel like I haven't spoken to Stevie in years. Like same with Chris and Jerry and all them, because that was like the group that that we initially had an Ant too. Shout out to Ant, feel me? Um, bro, you seem to have just grown so much from the last time I've seen you, which was my senior year, 2019, right? So like Damn, bro. It's just great to see how you've grown so far, bro. Like, I appreciate bro, that. Real shit, I appreciate bro. that. I appreciate that. But, like, with this guy, like, always when I was a kid, there was always older people that was, like, bringing me in. So there's always going to be, like, those old heads that's like, yo, get that kid out of here. You know what I mean? So I, I always say, like, the reason I am how I am now is because I always had older people that embrace me. You know what I mean? Right. But it takes, like, a real, like, a real guy to, like, not judge anybody because of the age or shit like that, but like really sit down and chop it up with them. And if they cool, they cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's how I ended up being cool with Chris and the other Chris and and I was like a freshman. These dudes is like juniors. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they were never like the type of guys that was like, yo, get this dude out of here. Like this kid's like fourteen. Like why is he in the car with us right now? You know what I mean? But that's always happened to me as a kid, just because I had. I've always been around my older sisters, so I, I always had a level of maturity of someone that was older than what my age was. So I'm not. So you knew I, how to connect with people. Yeah, people. I'm, I've never been the type of like kid to go around a dope group and like sit in the corner not being able to like have a regular conversation. You know what I mean? Like I always saw myself as an adult, even though I, when I wasn't. You know what I mean? I always saw myself as like I could I could sit at this table, even though there was probably times I I shouldn't be sitting at that table. You know what I mean? But I always saw myself as that. So even though I was 14, I was hanging around with people that was 17. When I was 15, I was hanging around with people that was 18. When I was a freshman, I was sitting at the senior tables. Like it's always it's always been that way. But probably because I had I'm the youngest of three, like of two older sisters. So I was always around like maturity. I was never around immaturity i didn't have 30 friends in my class i had 10 friends in my class and 20 people in the classes above me you know what i mean so guys like this are real ones because they never they never just kicked this the dude out guy. just because it was this nigga? just because it was kids <laughs> you know bro since you were like brought up basically around people older than you was there ever anything that you feel like you saw too early in your life like anything that kind of left you with like conflicted feelings saw too early damn i don't think i don't that's a that's a negative yeah that's like something that low-key left you traumatized type shit. i wouldn't say anything like traumatic I, I wouldn't say anything negative like anything i could think of was like maybe maybe i wanted it too young because I saw older people having it, so that could be like a negative. Like I'm over here thinking I wanna, like I wanna have a bank account, I wanna have a credit card. I'm like 14. Right, right. There, there's times where like you see stuff like that that could be seen as negative. Cause like, slow down. Like yeah, you're around older people, but you're not there yet. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So the only negative I can think of is like wanting stuff, or like trying to do stuff that wasn't for me yet. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I, those times I probably had to, like, slow myself down. Like, yeah, I want I want a car. I want I want to be, like, my oldest sisters and stuff like that. But I'm like, there's times where you got to slow yourself down. So that would probably be the only negative. But I think there was way more positive from being around yeah. older people than, than negative, I would definitely say. Because mm -hmm. once I got to the age of being able to do what the older cats were doing, like, I was planning on it. Like I was, I was planning on yo. When I turn 16, the day I turn 16, I'm, I'm gonna get myself a job. I'm gonna get my bread. Cause if I'm around 19 year olds, if I'm around dudes like this, it'd be like yo. Let me hold, let me hold five dollars. Like nah. If I'm gonna be around these dudes, I better be going to get it my damn self. If I wanna be older, I gotta, 
I got to be on the same type of time these guys are on. They getting their money. I'm not about to be the kid that's broke. You right. know what I mean? So you got a credit card as soon as you turned 18, right? As soon as I turned 18, hey, I had a credit card. card. Before, before I was 18, I had a credit card. I don't think it was because I needed... I forgot what it was. I think I needed some repair on my car when I was 17 because I got a car right when I was 17. Like, mm-hmm. I was, anything that was like, you needed an age deadline, I was planning on it. Like, mm-hmm. I was planning on it. When I was 16, I was saving for when the day I turned 17, I'm getting my license and I'm driving my car. Like, I'm going to have my car already. You know what I mean? So, I think I was 17, I probably had something messed up in my car and I needed the, the bread. And then my mom gave me her credit card and she's like, like, she knows how I'm responsible. I'm business savvy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So she's like, just keep it. Like, just keep it. So when the bill come in, like, it's her name on the card, but I know that's my card, you know what I mean? Like, if it's a, if it's just a Discover card, when the Discover card comes in the mail, she'll just grab it. She'll put it in my room, you know what I mean? Like, it's mine. Even though it's her name because I don't have the age to get my own, mm-hmm. it's... It was mine because I was using it on whatever whatever I needed to use it on type of thing. That's so the first thing I did when I turned 18. I got a credit card. And I and I separated my bank account from her account. That's the second thing. <laughs> so they see what the fuck you got. The same day, I pulled up to the bank. I was like, yo, could I do this without him? They're like, mm, the only way it would be if you opened another account and then transfer it. Or you could get him to sign this form. And I was like, all right, he's going to sign the form. <laughs> yeah. I was like, give me, give me out from anything that's... That Not that I thought he would take anything. Yeah, but it's yeah, like, yeah. you know... I just want to have my own shit. shit. Exactly. They don't need to know when you have it and when you don't have it. Exactly. So, bro, something that I, like, a really big thing that I noticed from speaking to you is that you have, like, a get it on my own type of mentality. for sure. Like, where did that come from? I feel like it might just be from not having it. You know what I mean? Like, not, I'm used to asking for stuff when I was a kid and not being able to get it. So, like, when I'm able to get it on my own, why am I asking for it now? Mm-hmm. I was asking for it as a kid because I couldn't get it. Like, I'm asking for the new clothes because all my clothes are old and everybody coming in with their new clothes for the year. Like, I'm asking for a new backpack. I'm asking for new kicks. I'm asking for all this different type of stuff. So why would I start asking for stuff now when I could just go work hard for it? You know what I mean? Everything is... Once I started working, it's like, bro... You got to get it yourself. Like, there's times where I've been, like, my mom's like, bro, let, let me pay for your lunch. And I'm like, I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like, thank you, though. Like, go, go, go take that. <laughs> you look, bro. Yeah. <laughs> let me get you some lunch. <laughs> go take that for your lunch. Like, I'm, right, I'm right. good. I'm working. Like, if I have it, I don't, I don't need to take it from nobody else, especially, like, my mom and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, like t- taking t- 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 money t- or, like. Need, needing anything from someone unless I'm like that's but that could be a con too like I've had times where I've waited until like the last minute where I'm like really in a hole on something where I asked for help and then it could have been like a split second fix if I would have just told them last week like for example if if um you lost a watch and then you're like damn bro now I gotta get a new watch you start thinking about how much bread you're down and then three weeks later you're like my, I lost my watch. She's like, oh, like, it's right here in this cabinet type of thing. So there's a lot of times where it's like you keep stuff to yourself, but I feel like that might be like a like a man thing. You know what I mean? You, you like, you, yeah, you don't want, you don't want to take somebody's hand out. You know what I mean? That I feel like that could just be like a man thing or that it's might like just... like your pride. Yeah, like a pride like, thing. You don't want it to be like, oh, they're holding my hand, dragging yeah, my shoes. Like, I, I don't, want to do I don't ever want it to come back and bite me in the face. Like, if I let my parents buy me uh, my first car one day when they be like give me your keys that's never happening to me because I never took uh, I never took your handouts like, I pay for all my stuff if you take handouts is when you give people the ability to have a, a, one, up a one up on you and I never want to have I never want to have anyone to be able to have a one up on me you know what I mean like if if I uh, took help from somebody else that's doing this clothing stuff in the future they could be like yo you remember that one time I did that favor for you? Like, nah, I don't need no one-ups. I don't need no handouts. So, something about, it might be like the man pride thing, or it might just be like not having it and asking for it when I was younger and not being able to get it, that nowadays I just don't like asking. Like, I don't need help. I work hard. So, I don't have to ask for help. I don't know if y'all feel the same way. Like, when it, I don't know if it's a pride thing. I don't know if it's a upbringing thing, but... 
I don't think anybody. I was the same. Not anybody, but there's probably a lot of guys that's like, if someone can help me with it, why not ask? You know what I mean? There's probably a lot of guys out there, but I'm. I hated asking for help. That's the thing. Like, if I wanted something, I'll take it. If I wanted, like, a damn. Makes me sound like a thief, bro. Asking my mom for a candy bar. She says, nah, I'm stealing that <laughs> shit. I'm taking that shit. It's my candy bar. I've taken mad toys, mad candies. I remember I went to Disneyland one time, bro. They had these uh these pins for like fifteen, twenty dollars. Bro, I would grab them by the handful and just walk out of there. Hey, yo. Just because bro, you what don't. do I look like as a kid paying twenty dollars per per <laughs> pin? You know? I remember I stole somebody's chain. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was on the school bus, bro. They were lagging and I took it. And they'll never know. Yeah, that's one of those kids that probably was stolen so many sneakers from the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. As they have them walking around some <laughs> <Both of them. laughs> For sure. But it's like something about hearing, and like hearing no, like that's like the worst uh, word in the dictionary. Like when you can't do nothing you, about it. Yeah, yeah, like when you when you end up taking a long time asking for somebody's help and then you ask and they're like, like nah, I can't even do nothing for you. That's like. I don't, I don't like hearing no, like, and I don't like shit getting thrown back in my face for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, as a kid, we heard enough of no's, like, oh, let me get this, like, nah. What are you oh, doing to network? Network, network? Mm-hmm. like with other people? Yep, yep. other I, people in your industry or in a field relating to it that could aid you with it. So, so networking, I would definitely say, like, I have peers in the school I go to. I go to Rutgers Business School in Newark. I would say I have a lot of um, connections out there. I would say there's a lot of, like I said, I showed a lot of love to other brands around before I even started mine, just so I could get like a feel of like how this stuff works and stuff like that. So I got a lot of clothing brand designers that I would consider like friends of mine, you know what I mean? So I network with people like that, and then I have stuff in the future like events that I want to be able to um, participate in exactly to be able to network even further but other than that like just showing love is like a, a great work a, a great way to network like if it's genuine you know what I mean it's not like I'm in everybody's DM that that does something like trying to get a network in you know what I mean like if one day there's a open spot in the event next to me I'm gonna think of someone that was showing love to me you know what I mean so it's not only like networking like I have to make a connection with you but like if I show genuine love with whoever I'm showing love with like one day it might come back around as a like a networking connection you know what I mean I was gonna ask bro like we had this other girl talk to us a little bit about networking but what does networking mean to you is it simply just a genuine connection or like do you do you see it as a business opportunity every time I feel like networking can be really forced like I don't in, in my eyes, networking really doesn't have to be that force. Like, if you introduce yourself to somebody that you know they got something going on and you know you got something going on, like, just you introducing yourself and making yourself remembered, that's automatically a network, whether you know it or not. You know what I mean? If I go up to a, a random guy at school and he got a, a detailing business and I'm doing this, and I chop it up with him in class, like, that's a network. Like, if if I ever think, like, one day I, I need this detailed work done on, on, a, on a whip, I'm going to think of him. And if he ever thinks of, I got to get some shirts for my crew. I got to get some, some tees or I'm going on vacation, he's going to think of me. So even when you don't think it's a network, it's a network. Like, there's, there's a lot of people that are, like, trying to force that it's really not as hard as as they try to make it seem like oh let me go to this um let me go to this uh career fair and shake every person there's hand so i get a networking like it sometimes when you're forcing it it, it doesn't work you know what i mean when it's genuine a lot of time like being genuine it works out in your favor you know what i mean if you're going into a career fair let me shake everybody's hand in here and tell them my name like how I'm many? Just a groupie at that point. How many? How many handshakes have they gotten in a day? You know what I mean? Why are you, Why are you memorable and they're watching you walk around this whole thing trying to network with everybody? You know what I mean? Or now you got too many people trying to hit you up like about a job opportunity, but you're really just looking for a like a, a backup plan just in case you want a new job. You know what I mean? So I feel like sometimes networking is pretty forced, but for me, networking is just 
any type of connection that you could think of that's memorable. Like, other than a, like a, a stranger saying what's up down the street, like, that's not networking to me. But if we have a genuine conversation, you know my name, I know your name, I know what you're into, you know what I'm into, that's a network to me. I, I, don't, I don't think too hard into what, what's networking. Like, if you took my number down, if you have my resume in your hand, you know everything I've ever done. Like, right. that, I don't think that's what a network really is. To me, a network could just be like a, like a connection of any sort. Have you ever gone to one of those events, like a networking event or anything like that? I'm like, oh, check out my shirts. That's yeah, you know? not, no, 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 not like any fairs or anything like that. No, no hate to anybody that does any career fairs, but like when I think of networking events, other than like pop-up shops and stuff like that, like that's just connecting with the people like in general. With that type of network, I'm definitely into, like I'm definitely looking forward to like being at events, having a table, having my stuff, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But like when it comes to like fairs and like career fairs, like I know a lot of that's like at our age when you come to like college, that's like, oh, there's a career fair this Friday, like everybody should be there, you know? I never been to any of those type of things because I feel like when it comes to like career fairs at least, those are people that are looking for like corporate office jobs and stuff like that. Like you're trying to you're like selling yourself to everybody that's in there like trying to get like a, a one job opportunity instead of like trying to look out for something that instead of looking out like I really want to work here you're like I'm gonna go to this fair and whoever hits me up with a good opportunity I'm going with whoever like you're like selling yourself to whoever's in there and I, I see that as like forced as well just that's not what I'm looking for like I got not saying that I'm gonna be where I'm at for my entirety but I'm good where I'm at I'm not looking to sit in an office at a bank like that's what a lot of these career fair opportunities and in my opinion that's what they got going on there but damn bro that's an hour ten that shit went by quick that leave be very quick that leave be very quick I wanna um, ask y'all where do y'all see this going like in the future cause I didn't even I didn't get to um like tapping on what you guys had going into him so Chris actually started posting and this guy's a ghost on social media so if you're if, you, if you're waiting on uh, you're waiting on any promotion from this guy it's gonna be really hard it's the same with me I don't be posting shit no so the, when Chris posted when I first got in tune with you guys so I wanna see like how far you guys are trying to like push this on to go you wanna go first? shit bro honestly I'm gonna let you handle it bro as the PR lead <laughs> yo bro shit my newly assigned position <laughs> damn for me as of today <laughs> in my mind like where I would like to see it go is we add more shows mm -hmm. we get maybe one or two people who are prioritizing editing and you know putting shit together cause that's like the main issue that we're having right now like, right. we got the ideas of things yeah. that we want to do we can't do it though because of the amount of labor because yeah, of the no. amount of time it takes it's like at the end of the day like we also we gotta go to work yeah, you know, yeah. we gotta you well, know, do shit hopefully one day we don't have to deal with yeah. the with the the main the main priority with the job but mm -hmm. we got you gotta deal with it as you gotta multitask as best as we can so yeah trying to come up with other shows and shit trying to market it more yeah. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, bro. When we talk about VJDC, right? Like where I'm thinking to it, like I'm thinking of just like Jersey, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Jersey on the map, like uh -huh. from artists to designers sure. to like, bro. You could be like a carpenter, bro. Mm -hmm. Like just have your yeah, own shit, but like Jersey, bro. Like real shit, just like real, authentic, genuine people that got a story to tell, bro. For real, because from every person that we've spoken to, like, be it, most of them are from our school, but we're planning to talk to, like, Anybody. artists, bro. Your reach, exactly, bro. And all those people, bro, I feel like, I feel like people have a story to tell. And that's the biggest thing, bro. Different, like you said, perspectives. Which is hard to get out nowadays. Like, there's a lot of people that got a lot of great shit going on, but haven't had a platform to tell their exactly. story exactly exactly bro so that's that's one thing that i want to see more just like more homegrown love you know just like genuine just like yo like come on just rock with us we'll rock with you type, exactly. type vibes i 
definitely could see that going. I don't know if you guys, you guys are on Instagram and YouTube for sure. I think are you guys on TikTok too? Uh, not not really, kind of. Yes and no. Yes yeah, and yeah. Well, let me tell you, that's the that's the spot. Like that, if you ever want something to get to reach outside of people from like a repost, like for you you have on, like a repost is gonna get you reach up to right here. But like. A place like TikTok is going to get you a random ass reach. Like anyone from up in Jersey to down in Cali. Like mm -hmm. it's so random. TikTok's so random. And that's like a like a pro of how random it is. Like anyone can tap into your shit. Yeah. Not just your boys, 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 cousin type shit. Yeah. Like, it's just, like the algorithm spreads. Yo, I, was, I was against it too. You know what I mean? At first I'm like, oh, like that shit's corny. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> some childish shit. Oh, yeah, some childish shit. But like yeah, I, man, we just hated on TikTok. I started my um, my my page on there for my brand, and then mm -hmm. that shit just started like rolling. Like on my personal one, that probably get like eighty views on a on a post or whatever. I, I'm not a pro either. Like, I only got a couple stuff up. You know what I mean? Right. But just in the couple stuff I have up, I see like the opportunity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when I started posting for my brand, at least like the views numbers from my personal page to so that went from like eighty on my personal page, like. My brand one's getting like 800, 900, 1,000 views. Like, and all you need is like one more person to tap in to change shit up. You know what I mean? Like, just one extra person at a time. Like, it's a slow grind. You guys know, like, yeah. all this shit is a slow grind. A slow but, grind, like, bro. anything that could exaggerate your reach like that is definitely something I should tap into. Definitely tap, try to tap into it. I know y'all probably got a lot on y'all plate right now, but whenever y'all do get the chance, like these little clips that you be posting on your story, you guys, the, the page you posting on your story, just instead of, not instead, but adding, like you you add it to your story on IG, take that same clip, copy and paste it, throw it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens, happens, but what it take you, like 15 seconds, you just post it on Instagram. Just click on the next app and post the same clip. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It only costs you 15 seconds, but it could really like yeah. get shit jumping. Like it could really get shit jumping. I've had people coming on my TikTok like, "Yo, where's this brand from? When's your next drop?" Like strangers that I've never seen Word. a day in my life type shit. So that if that's a little gem, if you want to take your tip, whatever. But the same time it takes you to post something on Instagram, take that same couple times, throw that shit on TikTok, just see where it goes. You know what I mean? Yo, as a as an interesting final note, just out of curiosity, bro, like I'm sure you get analytics from people from your website as mm -hmm. to where people buy. Yeah. But what's one of like the most surprising places that you see someone copy your your clothing? The analytics part is actually really funny because you get to see like it breaks down everything that you yeah. could think of. So probably the most interesting, it maybe not like location of where they got myself from but like where they found me at like i've seen like people find my link through like facebook like shit like that i don't really post i don't post on facebook you know what i mean but like you'll see um how many people visited your page and where they got your link from so most people get it from instagram or they get it from um tiktok but then you see like the couple people that got it from Facebook. I'm like, that's probably like my mom or something like that. <laughs> like, some shit like that. But the another funny part with the analytics, I would say, is like you'll see how many people like put your shit in their cart and then see how much the total comes out to. And then they're like, nah. nah. Like, yeah, like maybe maybe next week. And by the that's time they and by the time I didn't know it was like that either. Yeah, but you like, got abandoned carts. Abandoned carts. Like it'll tell you exactly how many abandoned carts there are. And sometimes it'll even tell you like where it's coming from. You know what I mean? So you're like, damn. I guess I guess he he, he, he didn't All those fuck with me as much as Chris. Yeah, yeah, abandoned cart. You know what I mean? But shit, like little analytics like that is definitely right. for sure. Like though. It's not, but there's no hate to anybody. Like, if you click on my website, like, that's automatically, like, pushing my shit. Like, you don't even got to buy none. Liking a, liking a post of mine, sharing a post of mine, commenting, opening my website, that's all love. Like, I don't need anyone's, I don't need anyone's money, you know what I mean? I appreciate anyone that fucks with my brand and orders, but I, I appreciate anyone that, like, opens my shit, supports my shit. I, I got no 
slander on anybody that abandons their carts. I don't want anybody to think I got any any slander on those that oh, abandon your carts. You know what I mean? But like by the time they come back around, trying to unabandon their car, like it's sold out. So, damn. I definitely that's an, that's like the last little note I want to throw in. Like I don't want my shit to be accessible accessible for everybody. Like if it's sold out, it's sold out. You know what I mean? I'm not here to make a thousand pairs of everything just because I want the money. Like. I want my shit to be a little bit hard to get, you know. Right, right, right. Just I feel like that's a little cool aspect. Like some people ask you, "Yo, let me get it sold out." All right, you know what I mean? Damn. Maybe next time, bro. Maybe next time. But yeah, shit. Thank you for coming out, bro. Appreciate the camera it. just died, so we ended it right on time. Perfect time. <laughs> Perfect. When's the next drop coming out? Shout out your Instagram, socials, all that. So my socials on Instagram is gonna be Survival of the Littest Brand. You can find that on Instagram. I got. Any updates, you'll definitely get that on my Instagram. But these shorts that I just showed off today should be, like, July 28th. That's that's the goal. So by the end of the month, I'm done with this drop. You know what I mean? And then August, we on to the next one. You know what I mean? And then TikTok, Survival of the Letters brand. Everything is Survival of the Letters brand. Shit, bro. Shout out to Steve for popping out, bro. Shout out to Survival of the Letters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Catch you on the next one. Peace.